So acute promyelocytic leukemia is interesting because it actually has a very high early mortality. And so I think that this is something that emergency physicians can have an impact on. If we recognize the condition, then we need to speak with the hematologist about potentially starting a life-saving drug called allotransretinoic acid, or ATRA. And so the take-home point for acute promyelocytic leukemia was to consider it, as well as talk to our hematologist about starting ATRA. And then the second take-home point for that and the, the further three conditions is that we should be admitting all acute leukemias. We should be transferring to a cancer center if we're not a cancer center. And if we are a cancer center, we shouldn't be sending these patients home because their white blood cell count's unpredictable and they can have a lot of the other complications that we also talked about. And so those other conditions, we talked about tumor lysis syndrome, and so that's something that we recognize when the patient's potassium is elevated, when the phosphorus is elevated, and when the uric acid's elevated, and typically the calcium is low because the calcium's binding with that phosphate. And so if someone does have um, tumor lysis syndrome, we want to treat that with IV fluids as well as potentially hypouricemic agents. So that was the take-home point for tumor lysis syndrome. The IDSA and ASCO came out with guidelines in 2018, and they basically just summarized our treatment as emergency physicians of neutropenic fever. And there, there's several take-home points from that. Number one, we should be treating patients with neutropenic fever with an anti-pseudomonal antibiotic within one hour of presentation. And obviously we're going to do that after we get blood cultures. Um, we can consider adding an, a di another agent on if the patient has a risk for catheter-related infection or if the pa patient is hemodynamically compromised. Um, and we can also consider in stable patients, now the opposite end of the spectrum, we can consider doing outpatient treatment. But that's obviously going to be in close discussion with the hematologist. Um, we're going to make sure we give them IV antibiotics in the emergency department. They have very close follow-up, and we start them on outpatient oral antibiotics as well. Patients who are at risk for leukostasis are patients with acute leukemia whose white blood cell counts are greater than 100,000. So if you see a patient with acute leukemia who has a white blood cell count of greater than 100,000, we need to assess for leukostasis. And the manifestations of leukostasis are pulmonary symptoms and neurologic symptoms. So we need to ask our patients about that and we need to do a good detailed lung and neurologic exam. If they have any signs of leukostasis, we should be speaking with the hematologist immediately for urgent cytoreduction. If they don't have any signs of leukostasis, we still need to be vigilant about it, and we should still talk to the hematologist about urgent cytoreduction reduction because we don't want them to develop leukostasis because the mortality of leukostasis is very, very high. And then the last emergency we spoke about was DIC, and DIC is very common, especially in the acute leukemias. We should suspect it when the INR is elevated and when the platelets are low, and we can help confirm the diagnosis by checking a fibrinogen level, which would be low, as well as a D-dimer, which would be elevated.